In this video, I'm going to talk about R notebooks. In particular, I'm going to talk about what these are and where you can find them and use them yourself, how to create one from scratch, and how to use um, a new language called Markdown, specifically R Markdown, which is a very simple language for adding formatting and links and other elements to your notebook. Now, the reason we're talking about notebooks is because they're part of a, of a broader concept known as literate programming. This is the idea that as programmers, as people that are using code, um, in particular researchers using code, we should make our code accessible to others so that they can understand what steps we've taken in the research that we've done or the interactivity that we've created. In other words, what we're expected to do is not just write the code that does something, but actually add a narrative to it, add an explanation of what these different lines of code are doing. And that's useful um, not just for other people to be able to understand what we've done, but also for ourselves in order to understand what we did before. So quite often we'll come back to a piece of code that we've written and we'll need to remember what it did. And it's also useful for colleagues who might have to work with our script or understand what we've done as well. It's also part of a move towards reproducible research. Generally, generally in research, the idea is that other people should be able to reproduce the same results or reproduce your methods and find similar results. Um, and um, this is the case for journalists as well. If we go about reporting, then other people should be able to find the same information if they repeat what we did. What we want to avoid, for example, are um, what's called bad Excel or some of the mistakes involved in using Excel. There's a very famous example of this with a piece of um, economic research which ended up um, forming the basis for the use of austerity as a political measure in the early 2010s. This was a piece of research that found that um, the relationship between GDP and debt um, caused poor economic performance in countries. Now it turned out that that wasn't actually ca the case. It turned out that the Excel spreadsheet that the researchers used to arrive at this conclusion actually had some technical flaws. And these flaws weren't noticed for, for lots and lots of years, partly because Excel spreadsheets are not very easy for other people to look at and reproduce. Notebooks, on the other hand, make it much more easy for people to look at the steps that we've taken in our research and reproduce them and test them and find potential mistakes. It also allows them to build on the work that you've done. This is just one example of um, a person who looked at one of the um, R notebooks that we created for a story in the BBC Data Unit. They looked at the code that I had written. They created a fork, in other words, a copy of my code, and then they actually improved it. They created a vectorized calculation. You don't need to worry about what that means but um, they created something that performed the same function, but faster. Now to create a markdown file in R or in RStudio, um, you need to go to the file menu and select new file and then select R markdown or R notebook. Either of ours will effectively create something very similar. And I'll show you how to do that now in R. So here's my uh, R project. First of all, of course, you have to create a project in R or open um, a project that you've created before. And I'm going to um, go through that process of going to file, new file. In fact, I'll, I'll drag the, um, actually, no, I can't drag it down, but I'm going to go through that process of file, new file, and then R markdown. It will ask me for a name, so I'm going to um, just call this my first notebook. Click OK. And what will happen is in this upper left corner, you'll have the, the notebook that you've created. Now, you'll notice it's actually called Untitled 1. So the title that you've given it is just here in the actual code. 
So at some point you're going to have to save it again. So if I press Control and S to save now, at this point I'm going to be given a option to give it a name and I'm going to have to repeat the same process. So now you can see this file over here ending in RMD, so it's a, an R markdown file, that's what .rmd means. And I want to draw your attention to a few things here. So first of all, R has opened a new area um, in the upper left corner of our studio uh, where, you're, where you can see your notebook, where you can see your file. If you close this, then it will disappear and this bottom left area pushes up to reoccupy that space and you can reopen it down here in the bottom right by just clicking on it again. When you create a new markdown file, a new notebook in R, um, it actually pre-populates it with some example code. And this is that language that I was mentioning earlier, this, this um, markdown or the specific R version of it, which is called R markdown. Um, this has a number of different elements. First of all, anything that's in a grey box like this, and it will start and finish with three of these characters, these kind of angled apostrophes. Um, this is a, a code chunk. So whatever's inside here is code that can be run. Anything outside of those grey boxes, outside of these, is narrative. It's just text that describes what's happening. Um, and, and this particular part here is some kind of metadata about the notebook as a whole, but it's not code. The only code is here. And if I scroll down a bit further, you can see some more code here and some more code here. So this particular notebook has three sections of code and the rest is text. Once you get used to notebooks, you may well just delete all of this and, and start from scratch, but it's quite useful that it presents you with this example of what a notebook looks like because you can start to learn from this code um, and you can start to understand Markdown. So for example, um, anything, any line that begins with a hash or a couple of hashes is a heading. Um, one hash would be a top level heading, two hashes would be level two, three hashes level three, and so on. So hashes are used at the start of a line to indicate a heading. And you'll notice that that also creates in our studio a little drop down box where you can collapse the whole section underneath that heading. So it's quite useful for organizing your notebook in that way. Most of the text is going to be normal. It's just written as you would. So here we've got an explanation. This is an R Markdown document and it tells you what Markdown is. Um, there's a link here as well. If you paste a link like this, it will work. So we've got some triangular brackets around that. Um, one way that you can use links, and it isn't actually here, but you can um, I just delete those arrows. And notice that when I delete those triangular arrows, it turns the link off. But another way that you can create a link is by putting a word in or a phrase in square brackets like this. And then after it, the link in normal brackets like that. So what this does is it turns this bit, the bit in square brackets into a link, taking you to the URL in the normal brackets straight afterwards. So that, those are the two ways of creating a link. You can link a URL just by putting triangular brackets either side of it, and you can link words by putting them in square brackets followed by the URL in normal brackets. There's some basic formatting that you can do with asterisks. So um, two asterisks either side of a word or a phrase will make it bold as it does here. A single asterisk will make it italic and three asterisks will make it bold and italic. So asterisks will format in that way. Um, and there's 
bullet lists as well. So we could say, um, so a bullet list would be an asterisk at the start of a line and then a space like this. And you can create numbered lists in a normal way like this as well. So those are just some of the basic formatting in our markdown. It's a way essentially of formatting text without having to learn HTML. And when you um, finish your notebook, you can actually do what's called knitting that as a HTML page. There's a button up here to knit it as a HTML page or a PDF or Word, and it will take all of that formatting and turn it into um, normal text. So this will become a heading, this will become a link, this URL will disappear, it will just be used to link. This will be formatted as bold italic over here as well. So that's the markdown part of the notebook and um, it's a very simple language, there's not very much to it and you can Google around to find out how to do different things in markdown but fundamentally it's headings and subheadings, italic and bold, links and bullet lists. The one other part here is the code. Now you'll notice uh, with the code chunks, first of all these three characters at the start and end that I mentioned, second of all this curly bracket section up here um, which says R setup include false. Now the other ones are slightly simpler but the key thing here is the word R that just tells you what language this code is written in. Anything after that just gives extra details that basically I wouldn't worry about right now. When you create a code chunk, you get a little play button here that will run that chunk of code. So if I skip down to this one, which says summary brackets cars, again, don't worry about the code for now and just want to focus on the structure of the notebook. If I play that chunk button, it's going to run that code and the result is a summary of a data set called cars. But the main thing is that this is a line of code and therefore I can run that code and the results will normally be displayed if there's any results to be shown underneath like this. And I can expand or collapse that area with the little button at the top or I can get rid of it entirely. So code blocks can be run using the play button and in fact you can run all of the code in a notebook um, using some of the other options as well. So that's that's the notebook, It's uh, there's a lot more you can kind of find out and a lot more ways you can use it but fundamentally it's a way of writing code and adding a narrative to it. In this particular notebook there are three lines of code but the notebook is, is much more than just the code, it's a narrative about what's happening here. So we might start off with a hash, uh, a heading saying you know my first notebook then underneath say this first line of code does something then you have your, your line of code and then you carry on with the rest and you of course you can delete all of this as you want um, so I'll just do one more example to show you how to insert a code chunk so if you want to insert a chunk of code up here there's an insert button at the top of your notebook click on that and you can insert a block of R code notice there are some other languages here as well that you can actually run within R but of course if you're writing in R you're always going to be inserting an R chunk of code and that will insert those three characters before and after and the curly brackets that indicate the language that's being used. Notice it doesn't have any of this extra stuff which is um, a little bit more advanced. So I can use a simple command like hello world and then I can run that command and see the result. So that's notebooks. As, as you go along um, make sure that you keep saving. So notice as soon as I make any changes to my notebook up here the name of the notebook has turned red and there's an asterisk meaning that there's been some changes and it needs to be saved. So I'll press Control and S to save it and that black 
that name will turn from red to black and the asterisk will disappear. So that's um, all I want to cover in terms of creating notebooks. One final thing to note is how to find notebooks from elsewhere. On the BBC data unit GitHub repo, um, you'll find lots of um, examples of stories and the code behind them. Each of these links is a different story in a dif different repo or folder. So if I take one example, this is a, a folder about art, uh, the UK's art collection. A couple of things to look out for. You'll always get a list of files in that repo. And if you look at the file extensions, you can see anything that ends in RMD is an R markdown file or a notebook that you can look at. Likewise, if I scroll down here, there's some links to scripts. So I can click on cleaning up data to extract years and I can see the R markdown file, very similar again that explains what's happening. And you can see here, we've got a bullet list, for example, and some a level two heading and a level three heading and lines of code. Now you could actually copy this code directly into your notebook. So I could copy all of this, scroll all the way to the bottom. Let's copy that, switch to my first notebook and paste into there and that's going to work just fine. So that's one way to copy the data. The other way is um, inside uh, GitHub. If you click on raw, you will get that file in pure text. And again, you can copy it that way or you can save it to your computer. If you do save it, you press Control and S to save, then make sure you, let's just bring this down a little bit, make sure you delete the .txt and make sure it's not saving it as text, which is one thing that browsers tend to do, particularly on a Mac. So make sure that it ends .imd and it's not saving it as a text file when you click save. And then once you've saved it to your machine, you can move it to the same folder as your R project. So that's um, all I want to talk about in terms of notebooks and literate programming. Some key points to sum up there. First of all, it's really useful to create a notebook for your own benefit as part from anything else. It's a great way to keep track of your code, to write notes about what you still need to do or any problems that you come across as you go through a particular project. It also makes it understandable to others in your own organization and outside and other people can build on top of it. Secondly, you can copy other notebooks to understand how they've done things. So there are dozens and dozens of notebooks on the BBC GitHub, re, um, GitHub page alone and you'll find lots of other news organizations as well. And you can use our markdown in those notebooks to add formatting uh, to your explanations so headings, links and so on. And then you can actually export that and use that formatting in a HTML version of your notebook or a PDF version that others can read and understand what you've done.